Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us, sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey tea sippers, hope you guys are doing good. So what's going down is that everybody has been waiting all week for the Chris Brown documentary to download. And so if you guys do not know, um, ID Discovery released the documentary about an hour ago. Um, I got a chance to watch it and it was pretty interesting if I do say so myself. This entire situation with Diddy is definitely exposing a lot of celebrities. A lot of people are being named and tied into Diddy's web. And Chris Brown happens to be one of those people. So if you guys do not know, in this documentary, it is called Chris Brown, A History of Violence. And basically, they go on to talk about the history of Chris Brown and all of the allegations that have been levied against him from physical violence against women, restraining orders, and things like that. And of course, they talk about the Rihanna situation where he physically abused Rihanna. They go on to talk about him punching a man in the face um, during a car accident, I believe. They also talk about how he broke his mother's um, car windshield um, when he threw the chair at the NBC studios and broke the window. So they're going down the entire list of situations that Chris Brown has gotten himself involved in, including the restraining order that Karuchi Tran had to put against him back in about 2017. So then on top of that, they also have uh, this Latina woman, Lizette. And I remember her and Chris Brown getting into it on social media several years ago. She also speaks about how Chris Brown assaulted her after she took a picture of Chris Brown. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Chris Brown punched me in the face. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So now the main thing that people were waiting for was this interview from Jane Doe. So if you guys do not know, there's a young woman who said that basically um, she was raped on Star Island. And basically he was having some type of party on the yacht, on the yacht that was attached to Diddy's home. She initially came out and said that Chris Brown raped her back in 2020. She filed a lawsuit in 2022. And basically it didn't go anywhere. So now she's talking in this documentary and I have the clip here. I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. Um, even coming forward as a Jane Doe, some people still found out who I was and I was attacked um, on the media, death threats, like I got a lot of different stuff that made it very scary for me. So even coming forward now with this, I'm just hoping that I can shed light to what really happened. <clears throat> I had just moved to LA. I was trying to pursue a dance career and it was about to be the new year. So we went out to Miami. It was just gonna be me and my friend, but two days before New Year's, I get a FaceTime call. It's from this party promoter guy I had met back in LA. And he's like, oh, hey, I see you're in Miami. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, you should pull up. Um, I'm at Diddy's house right now. And he, like, pans the camera. And he's on a yacht. And it's, like, a big yacht with uh, literally, I guess, at Diddy's house. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I guess that's better than the beach. So I was like, okay, cool. Since spring 2024, Diddy has been the center of a couple of rape and assault allegations and investigations. And in September, he was charged with racketeering and sex trafficking. He pled not guilty. I think a lot of people had heard all sorts of things about Diddy throughout the years, but in 2020, he wasn't being investigated. We get on the yacht, it's the morning time, so it's like 10 a.m. and everybody is like drunk and hungover, I guess still from the night before. There wasn't a lot of people, it was like really maybe like 15 people. So I see Diddy, he welcomes us, but he's really nice. And then I see my um, party room with a friend, I go hug him. And then I see Chris. I grew up like listening to all the R&B and everything. But what I liked about Chris is like, he was an all around entertainer. I thought it was like um, a sign I'm like, hey, maybe I could talk to this person who is literally the, the king of R&B and he would maybe be able to help me or guide me or give me some advice. Just if that's the base level, then 
the the craziest honest dream would be like for him to you know maybe put me on his tour the only thing bad about chris that we all know is that he was uh, abusive towards rihanna but i wasn't even thinking about that i don't know how old this jane doe is but let's say this jane doe is 21 or 22. to her the last time rihanna was in the picture with chris brown that was 10 years earlier so she was 11 or 12. she doesn't necessarily understand what happened with Rihanna, she maybe doesn't even know that he admitted to it. She doesn't know fully that he has a predilection for punching women in the face. Allegedly. Chris came over and he was just like, you know, you having a good time? I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm like, I, and then I, I just complimented him, like, you're obviously a great dancer. I'm a dancer too. He was like, oh, you're, how long have you been dancing? And I told him I just moved to LA and, um, I, you know, want to dance. He's like, just keep grinding, keep networking, and you'll get where you need to go. And I was like, yeah. So what was the first sign that something could be wrong? We had talked, and he had handed me a drink. I'm not even sure. This is where, like, things, my memory starts getting a little bit weird. So he had handed me a drink, and I don't remember if I saw him pour it, but I just drank it. And then he just hands me another drink. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. And so as I'm standing there, I did start to feel like just kind of tired. And my body was just feeling like a little heavy or whatever. And he was just like, yeah, it's kind of loud out here. Do you want to go towards the back? And I was like, sure. So I'm like, oh, he's going to take me on a tour of the yacht. This is great. We go down to the back and it's like a bedroom and then he like kind of just sprawls out on the bed and so we're just talking talking and i and i hate that i can't really even remember what we were talking about i just i remember i did lay back and i'm like why can't i get up Next thing I knew, he was on top of me. I couldn't move, and I said no, and then I felt him. Yeah, next thing I knew, he was, like, inside me, and I didn't want it. He's just like, it's okay, and he's, like, kissing me to stop me from talking, and then I felt him, like, inside of me, and I... I was just like so disgusted. He he grabbed my phone and he's like, now when you come back to LA, like, you know, you can just hit me up. He puts his number in and texts himself, hey. That is not uncommon, especially if somebody has taken advantage of someone. It makes more sense to keep them close. All right, so you guys just saw the clip where she said that Chris Brown handed her a drink. The drink made her feel woozy, and then he eventually raped her. Um, Azealia Banks and many people have talked about this, how this is a big thing in celebrity circles, the drugging of women, the drugging of, you know, fans, models, etc. Other story, but I feel like what really needs to be focused on is the drugging, because that's a whole nother level of evil. You get what I'm saying? Um, I'm not trying to say that one outweighs the other or that sexual assault is like less offensive than drugging somebody but drugging somebody is a different kind of like you gotta have a different kind of mentality to drug someone because you never know what somebody's system is like you never know what kind of underlying conditions they have you never know what kind of medications they are on you never know you you, you don't know anything about that person you like the the fact that you will drug someone it's like poisoning them. And I completely believe that that fucking happened because I seen Alexander Wang in the back room of fucking up and down, sniffing ketamine and sniffing coke off them fucking tables back there. They want to sit up here. This situation is very, very disturbing because at that point, it's not about the sex. It is about power. And it's about dropping these women's inhibitions. She's stating that she was raped, okay? 
And I'm not saying that she wasn't. But what I'm saying is the issue with all of these documentaries is that things start being so convoluted and sensationalized. For weeks, they've been hyping up this documentary. But most of the stuff that was in this documentary was technically OT that we've talked about over the years on social media that we've known about with Chris Brown. Now, with this Jane Doe situation, the thing that's kind of disturbing to me is I remember reporting on this back in 2022 and her lawyers dropped her from the case and they dropped it because Chris Brown was able to show proof that there was some type of consensual situation. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip really quick. Well, what time is it? Put the time and date. at the very end of the video he writes no more dragging me through the mud clearly you can see all the cap now let's see if the media will keep that same energy they had trying to destroy me to run the real story me and my team are taking legal actions on the situation. You don't play with people's lives like that. Thanks, Team Breezy. Then Rolling Stone ends up reporting and stating Chris Brown's rape accuser loses lawyers after texts found on phone. And this was on March 9th of 2022. So then they're stating here in January 2022, a woman filed a lawsuit accusing Brown of raping her on a yacht in Miami. In December 2020, the woman attempted to sue Chris Brown for $20 million. Brown denied the allegations and later submitted text messages and voicemails to the Miami Police Department, which indicated a consensual relationship with the accuser. In the text message, the woman is seen, is seen courting Chris Brown in lewd language and bare naked selfies almost immediately after the alleged rape took place. According to TMZ, Brown countersued the accuser for defamation and the accuser's lawyers withdrew the case after she was made aware of the messages and voicemails Brown submitted to the Miami police. The lawsuit against Chris Brown was dropped. Well, as you guys heard in the voicemail, that is the same voice. So I had assumed that it was going to be a different woman, but that is the same woman. So to me, it makes me side eye this entire documentary because this case had already been proven and thrown out. I'm not saying that Chris Brown is innocent. What I'm saying is that this case was very much hyped up when this was an old case. You have the other young girl that came out that was also recently accusing Chris Brown and says Gemini I had talked about that on my live stream. That was a more recent case and she initially filed a police report. Let me go ahead and refresh Shaw's memory right here. I never thought that I would make this video, but it's time. They finally got Diddy. They finally got him. And, but the thing is, there's so many more men out there just like Diddy who are abusers, who use their fame to lure women in and abuse them. And I wanted to come on here to say that it is time to out every single abuser in the industry, every single one. They, we, they all need to be held accountable. And the thing is, I would be a hypocrite if I came on here and I was telling other women that they need to speak up if I'm unwilling to speak up. I was raped at Chris Brown's house by his friend, Sage the Gemini. Yes, I know. I should have never been at Chris Brown's house in the first place. This happened when I was 18 years old. I'm 26 now, um, as of today. And I should have never been there. But Sage the Gemini raped me at his house. Chris Brown raped my friend when she was underage. She was under the influence and she was 16 years old. These are, were on two different occasions. But the thing is, all these men, all these abusers, they hang out together. Chris Brown and Sage the Gemini are rapists. Why have I been afraid to come out all this time? You want to know? It's because right after Sage raped me, he had me sign a paper saying that everything that happened was consensual. And he was my Uber drive. Uber, he, he got me the Uber to Chris Brown's house. And he, I didn't have any money. And I needed him to... to get me the ride back and like I, I didn't know 
if he was gonna, I didn't know what was gonna happen if I, in that moment, I was in shock. I couldn't believe he, I, like, I, I don't really know how to talk about this. Um, I just wanted to come on here and let you guys know that Chris Brown and Sage the Gemini are rapists. Um, and I think that we all, all of us. All right, so you guys just saw Hannah's video. And um, from what I've heard, she has gone to file a police report, but I think she's more going after Sage Gemini than Chris Brown. So this entire situation is crazy. Again, Chris Brown does have a history of violence against women, but this is my issue when these documentaries come out and they sensationalize bits and pieces, as opposed to just stating the facts, you know? And my thing is there's a lot of abusers in Hollywood so I hope that there's going to be more documentaries showcasing all abusers, not just them cherry picking the Diddy's and the Chris Browns, because there's also a lot of white abusers in Hollywood on top of black abusers. I think all of these people should be outed if there are genuine facts. What ends up happening is that you have real situations, real documented proof, but then you have allegations and you have other things mixed into one. And it ends up just, you know, turning into a big muck. It ends up where people just feel like, you know what, I'm tuning out. This is too much. It's not making sense. This may be factual, but then this needs to be under a bit more scrutiny. So the entire situation is very interesting, but I was not impressed, honestly, by the documentary because for me, a lot of this stuff is things that we've already known, we've already seen. And these are things that I have personally covered on my channel over the years with Chris Brown. So with that being said, I would love to hear from you guys. What are your thoughts? Did you guys get a chance to watch the new ID documentary on Chris Brown today? How do you guys feel about this? Um, do you feel like the girl who's accusing him of the rape on Star Island in 2020, do you believe that she's a true victim? Or do you feel like since her case was thrown out and her own lawyer is backed away from her, that the media is just sensationalizing this case? I look forward to reading y'all's comments down below. I'll talk to y'all later. Enjoy the rest of your evening. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.